There's some very interesting professional opportunities in hydrogeology. And if you look out across the field, you'll see really three main areas where people are working in hydrogeology. One is water as a resource, primarily water supply and protecting this resource. Another is water as a hazard, trying to protect society from this hazard. And then there are research jobs where you try to learn more about the hydrogeologic system. So water supply. Of course, water is an essential resource. Everybody uses it for drinking, showering. Um, we use it in agriculture, variety of different applications. The water supplies that we use are, in some cases, surface water. Uh, but in many cases, we use groundwater as a water supply. About half of the drinking water is, uh, comes from groundwater. So the hydrogeologist is primarily going to be working with this aspect, the groundwater end of uh, water supply. And to that end, uh, the way that the water is obtained uh, from the subsurface is through wells. So understanding how wells work will be an important role of the hydrogeologist. Here's a well that's flowing at a high rate, and here's an application for that high rate of flow in agriculture. A variety of applications, um, drinking water uh, here, this person having a nice cool glass of water, that's a domestic water supply, uh, water supplies for a town or for various industrial applications for cooling. Uh, for example, agriculture is a big application uh, for irrigation and then also commercial applications. Uh, typically, one example would be where water is used um, uh, for uh, bottling and selling. Uh, bottled water is a, a big business these days. So what does the hydrogeologist do in this setting? Well, um, wells are going to play a central role in water supply and understanding how these wells work, how rapidly can water be produced from these wells? That's going to be a key question. And in addition to how rapidly, how long can this pumping rate endure? How does the pumping rate change the system? And how does the pumping rate change with time? So questions about overall sustainability of uh, pumping are going to be really uh, important aspect uh, to address. And it isn't just how fast or how long the water can be pumped. Uh, those questions are related to water quantity, but the quality of the water is also important. Certainly, if the water looked like this uh, in your sink, you would be reluctant to brush your teeth. So water composition is the key thing. Is it safe? Is it suitable for the intended application? And of course, if you're doing these things, if you're pumping water out of the ground, there are consequences. What happens to your neighbor's wells? What happens to the surface water? If there is a stream nearby and you pump water out of the ground, will that stream go dry? Or will it be affected uh, in some way? There can be environmental and ecosystem impacts. And also, you know, water is really a crucial resource. And so if you're using it in a way that impacts your neighbors, um, there can be uh, big consequences. There can be economic consequences, political consequences. If uh, you're taking your neighbor's water, um, you may hear about it in various unpleasant ways. And so understanding the system and being able to deal with uh, those uh, various conflicts is, uh, well, the political aspects probably are going to be handled by um, people separate from hydrogeologists, but hydrogeologists are going to provide the understanding to, um, to, to be able to at least set the stage for uh, settling these disputes. 
And of course, then there's looking into the future. How do these various aspects of water supply change in time? And how can we anticipate them? How might they fluctuate seasonally? How might they fluctuate in a longer term uh, climate change scenario? What happens if there are various uh, episodes of spills? Um, how does that affect the, the system? Um, addressing these changes are very, or these uh, processes in general are, uh, is very important. And this is one of the things that hydrogeologists do. Some of the themes that emerge here, understanding what the flow paths and rates, where the water is flowing, how fast it's flowing, uh, these are important as well as the volume of water stored in the subsurface and how that storage changes and how it's replenished uh, through recharge and lost through discharge. So protecting the water quality. Uh, this is really the essence of the environmental industry and this is a big employer of hydrogeologists. So to understand this problem, we need to look at the sources of things that would affect the water quality, that would have an adverse impact. And certainly industry, large industry that produces solvents and that uses fuels and metals, smaller industry like dry cleaners or um, gasoline stations, these industries handle uh, fluids that can uh, leak and get into groundwater and uh, act as contaminants that impact the water quality. Agriculture, uh, fertilizers, pesticides, herbicides, these are spread on fields and can get into groundwater and cause problems. Domestic sources, people's septic systems. In some cases, if the septic system is designed improperly, uh, the, the um, sewage or the, the septic effluent may leach down into groundwater. Septic systems are designed so that the microbes are uh, attenuated in the subsurface and they don't reach groundwater, um, but if there are some problems then uh, this, this may occur. Also there are a variety of naturally occurring contaminants that in fact can cause some big problems. This guy right here uh, is a Cambod Cambodian fellow who's been drinking arsenic in his groundwater for quite a few years. And you can see these um, uh, lesions on his hands. Uh, this is a symptom of long-term arsenic poisoning. And as it turns out, arsenic is a problem worldwide. And in Southeast Asia, arsenic in groundwater is particularly problem particularly problematic. Uh, there have been many millions of people exposed to arsenic contamination in groundwater uh, in Southeast Asia and it's been recognized as one of the largest mass poisonings in history. So understanding how this contaminant occurs and how it moves is a, an important thing to uh, for hydrogeologists to, to do. And some of the other well, I guess if we take a step back then and look at kind of the overview of what hydrogeologists would do in the area of water quality. Step one is to figure out what the problem is. Where are the contaminants? How are they distributed? What are their concentrations? How do they move? Typically contaminants will be in the groundwater. They're moving with the groundwater. Uh, what is their direction? What is their rate? Often they move slower than the groundwater. So how fast uh, are they moving in fact? What is the source of the contaminants? And what are the risks of exposure to humans or the ecosystem? And so once you figure out what the problem is, then the next step is to fix it. And there are a variety of things that can be done maybe you uh, can fix it totally or maybe you at least make it better. So one possibility is to arrest the migration of the contaminants. Stop the contaminants from moving in the water uh, and, and stop the problem from getting worse. You may remove contaminants from the subsurface 
or you may destroy them in place. Uh, you may target the actual source of the contaminants or there may be a dissolved plume of contaminants uh, that emanates from the source that you either remove or destroy. There may be a variety of alternatives. So evaluating the alternatives and coming up with the best choice uh, is an important role that hydrogelatists will play. So in some cases, water is a problem. Uh, if you want to build something underground and it's below the water table, then water flowing into the thing that you're building can be really a big deal. Here is a, a mine, an underground uh, tunnel that was used for mining and you can see it's filled with water. Uh, and so that obviously is not going to be a situation where you can work and so in order to keep this mine workable you need to remove that water. Um, there are a variety of other similar applications uh, if you're digging a pit for a foundation uh, or tunnels then you need to, to dewater the area in order to be able to do this activity successfully. As it turns out, we store waste underground uh, in a lot of cases. Uh, when you throw something out from your house, it goes to a landfill, and often that landfill is put, it, it consists of a, a pit that's dug in the ground, the waste goes into that pit, and then there's a cover put over top. And the idea is that the movement of water is going to go through the waste and uh, dissolve contaminants within the waste and mobilize them and cause them to move downstream and potentially uh, then result in problems. So it's interaction between water and the waste that is an important uh, risk factor and trying to minimize that is an important way that you can uh, reduce problems of um, storing contaminants in the subsurface. So municipal waste in landfill is probably the most common. There's a landfill really associated with every community. Um, but a, a, an even bigger problem, uh, at least a more serious problem, although it's quite isolated, is the storage of radioactive waste in the subsurface. Uh, radioactive wastes are, are very hazardous and trying to minimize their mobility in the subsurface really requires understanding how the wastes interact with water. So landslides like this one here can cause some uh, very big problems. Uh, I think probably everybody has seen on the news the pictures of the landslide recently in Washington State in the community of Oso, uh, that landslide killed quite a few people and was a big tragedy. As it turns out, the stability of slopes is controlled, um, well, from a variety of factors, but groundwater and the pressure that it exerts on the rock plays a big role. Uh, as the pressure increases, the slope can become destabilized. So in order to promote slope stability, you need to prevent the buildup of pressure. And that's done either through drains that can allow the water to uh, flow out of the hill slope passively or wells in some cases. So the things that hydrogeologists do, it's really the same kind of things that we saw on the previous slide. You got to figure out what the problem is and then come up with a way to fix it. So. If you're interested in research, um, basically what you're trying to do here is improve the understanding of, the, of water in a variety of systems. The basic hydrogeologic system, how does water work in the subsurface, uh, there are a variety of aspects that can be addressed here in a research context. And there are also um, applied aspects where uh, research is done to address the kind of applications that we saw in the previous slides. So you try to better understand the role of water in water supplies. And in particular, how to project into the future and anticipate uh, how uh, water supply wells will perform. 
Also, there's a lot of research going on into water quality, how contaminants are transported and react in the subsurface. And this is often done in the context of either understanding the, the movement of the contaminants or trying to remediate the contaminants in the subsurface. And the general picture of water and geologic processes is something that people are investigating to try to understand hazards uh, or just to try to better understand the earth system. So one thing that you need to keep in mind is if you're going to be going into the research area, if this is what you want to do, then you really need to be considering a graduate degree. So as we look over the things that the professional hydrogeologist does, a few common themes have emerged. Probably the most important one is the understanding of the natural groundwater system. How does the water flow? What are the paths it takes? How fast does it go? What are the travel times from point A to point B? How is water stored in the subsurface? What is its composition? How does groundwater interact with surface water? How does it interact with the Vedo zone? And then in addition to characterizing the natural ambient condition, what happens when things change? When a well is put in, how does this affect the system? When chemicals are introduced, how do they move through the system? How do they react? How might they be destroyed intentionally or recovered? And then also, what happens to the groundwater system? If the climate gets hotter, uh, how is that going to affect the recharge, the perhaps other aspects of the groundwater flow system? So answering these questions takes a skill set. And that's the skill set of the hydrogeologist. They need to be able to measure the important properties and processes that we've discussed. You have to be able to analyze those measurements and interpret the results. And there's a variety of things that, are, that come into this with the analysis and interpretation. And really fundamental to doing this is understanding how the hydrogeologic system works, the underlying principles. Once you come up with an interpretation, you need to be able to communicate. What did you do? What were the measurements you made? How did you make them? What were the data you came up with? And then finally, when you come up with interpretations, uh, what, what, interpreta what is your interpretation? And so you have to be able to communicate this activity uh, in the form of a, uh, a report and also commonly uh, as a, a presentation. So that's the skill set. And that's what we hope to address over the next few weeks in this course.